So first we need to talk about the word budget for a minute. If you think of a budget of being a restriction or a limitation, you probably need to redefine what the word budget really means. So we're talking about the noun budget and all that is is really it's simply a spending plan. YNAB budgeting is very different than any other budgeting method you've likely used and that's shown in their slogan which is you've never budgeted like this. So what are some ways that it's different? Number one, money isn't budgeted until it's actually received. Two, all this money is budgeted to zero by giving every dollar a job. Um, number three, you're free to be flexible and change your budget all month long. I change my budget every week. If I see that things are going a little better or usually a little worse than usual, I'll change my budget so that I don't set myself up for failure for the rest of the month. Number four, monthly budgets integrate together. And often this month's income goes towards next month's expenses, which of course makes sense. Number five, the key focus is on planning where your money is supposed to go in the future or where you want it to go rather than where it already went in the past. So instead of focusing on forecasts or restrictions, what I love about YNAB is that it encourages you to be really intentional about where you want your money to go. So let's get started. On the upper left hand corner you'll see three options, one for budget, one for reports, and the last for all accounts. We're only going to use this budget option here. So if we go back to January, which is the month that we're kind of looking at, I've entered some information um, to kind of illustrate these, these budgeting options here. So on the top first you'll see this budgeting summary for the month. The screen box will be um, green if it's zero or greater than zero, and it will turn red if you have over budgeted. The funds for January is all incoming money that you have marked as inflow to be budgeted. Overspent in this prior month is an amount that you need to um, take care of if you've overspent with cash funds. Budgeted in January is the total of this budget column here. And then budgeted in future is any amounts that have um, been included in this funds for January. You can actually budget those in any future month. And that's of course only if you have an extra income here to be budgeted that you can go to any number of uh, future months and budget that out. So the, the total of all four of these categories should be zero. If this is zero here in this green to be budgeted box, then these will sum to zero. That's how it's it's calculating that. So that is the one rule of YNAB that you cannot break. This has to be zero. If this isn't zero, you're not doing it correctly. If we look at this right hand side, we'll see total budgeted, total activity, and total available. Those are simply the sums of these individual columns here. The total inflows would be all income received and marked as, as inflows for the month even if they're budgeted in following months. So like we mentioned, we can budget some of it in January and if we have some extra here, we can go to February and start budgeting um, that those inflows during that month, but that will still be included here. If we click on an individual category, let's say groceries, we get some additional information here. So we have um, kind of a reconciliation of what is in this available column. This is a pretty simple example because this is the first month, but if we had previous months we would take all cash left over from December, assuming that um, you, you rolled over some of your grocery budget from that, that previous month. We have budgeted this month, which is this 325, and so far we have no cash or credit spending. It is important to differentiate between cash and credit spending because it's treated a little bit differently if this ends up, this available balance ends up being negative, meaning you under budgeted for that category. While we're still in this grocery subcategory here, we can look over here and see the quick budget. So this is a really useful option to make things um, a little bit more accurate and of course a little bit more quick. The budgeted last month option is pretty obvious, just whatever you budgeted in December, which in this case is zero because it is the first month. What you've spent last month, you can auto-populate with that. The average budgeted and the average spent would include all of your budget or spending from the time that you started YNAB. So you can see how that would be a little bit more useful if you have used YNAB for quite a while. 
if we get out of this subcategory here, we have many of the, the similar options, but a word of caution. If you click any of these, it will budget for the entire month, all of these budgeted amounts. And that's not generally what I want. I may or may not have, well, I did, made this mistake where I I thought I was budgeting for a subcategory and I clicked one of these and I didn't realize it for a while. So I had to kind of redo my entire budget for the month. So just a word of warning on that. YNAB has a really innovative way that they track credit card spending. When you spend using credit cards, you subsequently make one of two choices. So number one, you either pay off the balance in full on or before your statement due date, or number two, you pay only a partial balance of what you've been spending that month on the credit card. So that would be referred to as carrying a balance on your card. We see in this example, um, this person does have some credit card debt, a little over 2000. We don't have anything um, sho showing up here this category was set up automatically by YNAB and the subcategories as well when I included these credit card accounts um, as new accounts. So they make it very sim simple and easy to use, but it is a little bit tricky to understand just because you probably haven't seen this before. So if we were to make a minimum payment on our credit card, we would first budget that minimum payment and then we would see the activity here and the available balance would be zero. If you pay off the credit card in full every month, then you and you have the funds to do so as being calculated by YNAB, this available balance would always match your credit card balance here. That's kind of barely skimming the surface of, of the overview of credit card payments. If you want more information about how credit card payments are treated in YNAB, you can go to YNAB's website and I have a link in the tutorial. If you're looking for a solution for budgeting that you can just kind of set it and forget it, YNAB's probably not for you. Um, you might want to try sticking with Mint or setting up a Mint account. Um, Mint automatically categorizes every transaction and you, you really need very little input and very little setup. But the focus of Mint and, and the other budgeting software out there is on retroactively tracking your spending than on really setting goals and proactively trying to spend according to your values. So if you want to take your finances to the next level and you're really motivated to do it, YNAB is the best budgeting tool out there. Um, and in the next tutorial, I'll show you exactly how I budget on a weekly, monthly, and an annual basis with YNAB.